Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm back on with Colton Cox. He has just released his debut EP titled Internal Combustion, and I am super excited to talk to him about it. Colton, thank you so much for coming back on. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty great, Austin. Uh, happy to see your face again, I suppose. Yeah, man, <laughs> always a pleasure. I really, really enjoyed our, our conversation last time, so yeah. excited to do this again. And yeah. uh, for those that didn't watch it, highly recommend it. We talked all about Stuck. And I mean, yeah, I kind of want to follow up on what we were talking about and keep keep going. Um, first thing I want to talk about, though, is, is obviously this EP. It's been a real pleasure to, first off, follow you on social media and see all these other releases come out and kind of the lead up and see what you've been up to. Yeah. And to finally hear the final product which I'm not surprised delivered. So first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is this EP as a whole. Lyrically, I'd love to know if there's a sort of uh, like overarching message that you're trying to get through from the start to the finish. So um, I kind of had the, the message of this album changed a little bit for me um, as I was recording it and going through it. So OK. Uh, Internal combustion is the name of it, right? Right. Uh, when I started writing it, I, it was this idea that uh, I was like writing a lot of music and feeling very creative. And it was just kind of like my output was just going really quickly. Totally. And so internal combustion was supposed to be this idea that uh, I was just having like this creative explosion on the inside, right? Like yes. it's supposed to be a big positive thing. Well, uh, I started writing this um, back in 2019, and then uh, a long time coming. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 2020 happened with COVID and all that, and it kind of turned more into like this like pent up energy that I had inside of like, mm -hmm. all right, I've got all this stuff written, and I'm like ready to to play shows and get out there and get my solo career going. Sure. And so I couldn't do any of that. <laughs> And it kind of turned into this like anxious feeling of like wanting to go out and do all of these different things and not being able to do it. Uh, and it just kind of felt like, you know, getting antsy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you and everyone else, but it's a lot yeah. different when your livelihood depends on, right. I mean, and at least your happiness. There, there's so many professions and careers where it's, oh, just work from home. Sure. Or uh, even like, like the other parts of the entertainment industry where it's like film and TV. Okay, well, we'll come to work and we'll, we'll wear a mask and we'll get tested and this and that. There is no version of that in live music and getting out there and playing. Like the yeah, industry whole, that got hit the hardest by far. Our whole purpose is to bring people together. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's complicated. Um, well, yeah, like I said, the EP as a whole is awesome. It's really nice to hear everything in context from start to finish, and it flows perfectly. It's cohesive, and there's some really bright moments that that show themselves as well. I know that we talked a little bit on the production side last time, but I'd like to sort of follow up on that. Uh, there's a very intimate feeling, like it's it's a very like close and warm and and explosive i'm going to use that word a lot <laughs> on the production side of things um how did it work how did you make this happen well um so i recorded all of these tracks at um, red cat recording which is in peck kansas it's about like 20 30 minutes south of wichita kansas i don't, I don't know if you've ever been to kansas before but <laughs> no nope, on the list i'll, I'll get yeah. out there one of these days <laughs> Um, so Wichita is the largest city in Kansas. Kansas City is technically sure. like half in Missouri and, and half in Kansas. Uh, but Peck is just a small town about 20, 30 minutes south. And uh, Luke Wallace is the guy that owns Red Cat Recording. Okay. Uh, he's a very nice guy. And by the time we finished this EP, I felt like we had also become good friends so I feel like maybe part of that came into the uh is that you or me <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> okay. um I uh we've we've become good friends and I felt like he really had a great idea of what I was going for sound wise sure 
and he's just he's just got a good ear um as far as actually recording it um stuck and rubber band girl i kind of called in like guest stars you might say to play on those tracks sure uh, i'm people... glad you brought that up because i want to hear all about it but keep going on this spot <laughs> yeah. um so those two tracks i called in some people who play in the wichita music scene who are friends of mine um, and also stellar musicians sure um but uh they came and played on those tracks and then the rest of them um, were done with my former band, um, Afro Jim. It was all the same members that I had. Uh, so really that sense of, you know, intimacy and warmness or whatever, I think is probably just because we've been playing together for so long. It probably just yeah. came through that way. <laughs> but I mean, even in the sound, even in the way that it comes through and the way that everything was mixed, yeah. maybe it's just me. I mean, you don't have to agree. Everyone listens to music differently, but no, I think no. whatever way it came out, it came out great. Yeah. I um I don't know I feel like we I definitely am a fan of um warmer sounding music music that has kind of a more um emotional content to it so yeah. I I wasn't exactly going directly for that like warm intimate feeling but I'm glad it came through that way cuz it totally. kind of goes goes with the lyrics so right That's awesome man well uh you know I want to know I want to know about the band because it, it feels like the scene and where you're playing is very tight knit, or at least that's the feeling that I'm getting. So is it not just the people that you're playing with, but the whole community? Does the community support each other when it comes to music? Well, so this was, I started recording this when I was still in Wichita. I'm in Kansas City now, but right, uh, right. Wichita is a pretty tight knit group. I mean, obviously there are still, you know, different groups and clicks that people run yeah. with, but um wichita is not like a huge music scene it's kind of an up-and-coming one okay um, even though it's been going on for years and years and years yeah. but um, i know exactly what you mean it's never going to be la it's never going to be new right, york right. or whatever but but yeah i mean um the, all the people that i played with on the album are people who i have either played with directly like people yeah. from my former band or they're people that i played a lot of shows with and spent a lot of time with and they're uh, they're just friends of mine they're good friends of mine yeah. um so yeah i mean wichita's music community is definitely because it's smaller i think you kind of have to be a little bit more tight-knit um, totally. because i mean who else is gonna push the shows that are coming out and go to the shows yeah. that are coming out other than other people in the music scene so. exactly <laughs> no no you're totally right you're totally right yeah um, and then I'd love for you to shout out the band members that helped you on these additional tracks because they deserve, yeah. they deserve um, shout So outs. the main ones were my former bandmates. So I had uh, guitarist Aaron Plummer. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I kind of exchanged a few solos on this one. So like the rubber band girl solo is, is Aaron. Yes. That dude, he shreds. <laughs> yeah, um, I can tell. <laughs> that that yeah. one stood out probably the most. But that's yeah. okay. Jeff Winningham played bass on a good deal of them. And then uh, Jake Edwards played drums. Uh, on Rubber Band Girl, that was Jerry Travis on drums, who plays okay. in a band called High Plains Drifter. Nice. Uh, uh, I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Aaron actually plays bass in that group, too. So he's he's doing double duty. But um, so Jerry played drums. Uh, Caleb Drummond played bass, which Caleb is a very like seasoned Wichita music veteran. He's played with like seven, eight different bands up up to this point. Sure. Uh, and then uh, on Stuck, I had um, I think the only one that I haven't mentioned is Eric Sharping. Uh, he played the keys on okay. Stuck. Um, he. I don't know what he's doing nowadays he wasn't a band called the skeptics but the skeptics are not a band anymore so i don't know what he's doing <laughs> so that happened yeah. awesome thank you for doing that because they really do they deserve the recognition for yeah. what they've done here and it, and it even better because it's under your name so right <laughs> <laughs> for anyone that doesn't watch this they're just going to assume you play everything and it just right went all over the place <laughs> um so like I mentioned, it's been great following you on social media and keeping up and seeing what you're up to. I know that last time we had touched on the possibility of you getting out there and playing shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to see that you are out there playing shows and doing yeah. the damn thing. 
I want to know all about the experience and how it's all come together. Well, um, so to promote the release of the EP, I went on a, uh, it's a short tour, um, kind of yeah. just through Kansas for the most part, but um, I went on a tour with my friend Calvin Arsenia, who is a harpist and singer. Okay. Um, He's a pretty cool. Harpist, guy. damn. Yes, a Few harpist. And far he, between. He does a lot of different stuff, but I, you could call it like R and B harp, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick, actually. Okay. That's a very general, <laughs> yeah, thing that does not cover everything he does. But um, so we went on tour, and we uh, that was actually the first time that I had really toured, um, which okay. was fun. I had, I had a yeah, great man. time. Um, we went to Wichita, Kansas. We went to lawrence kansas and then we did quite a few things here in kansas city um we did like i set up like a cd signing thing for myself at a record awesome. shop uh and i also uh, uh we did like a like a porch concert at my house so we had oh, like yeah. a, a yard party i live like right in the middle of midtown uh kansas city so i got, got some car traffic. And everybody it's coming by so there you go that's awesome. Has there been a specific highlight since you started playing shows? Like one thing that stands out the most? Man, I I don't know about one specific thing. I mean, yeah, it was, it it was, a, little, it was a little stressful, you know, just the, the traveling and, and moving instruments from place to yeah. place. And that. But um, I'm just I'm just really glad to be able to play in front of people again. I hadn't totally. I had played some like solo stuff here and there throughout 2020, and it was all outside right. and it was all by myself. Um, so I hadn't played with a band since uh, December 2019. Um, Everyone yeah, was so, rusty at that point. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, honestly, when we started rehearsing, I my the other people that I played with, um, the the Afro Gym guys, um, they had all been playing shows and other bands and stuff that they've been doing so they not very many but they played a couple of shows before sure. the tour happened uh but i was the only one that hadn't really played anything so i felt definitely rusty like shaking off the dust and like kind of just That's man right. do i still know how to do this <laughs> not the best as a lead man but you, you find your rhythm and you find your groove right. and you get back into it yeah i mean it only took a couple of rehearsals to really kind of get yeah. the get the, go. the flow going so totally uh, any fun tour stories or anything, you know, kind of crazy happening um, in the background? Because half the fun has to be hanging out with your friends. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, the whole process. Yeah, I um, I really enjoyed that porch party thing that we did. Um, so I got to meet some of my neighbors that I hadn't met before <laughs> at that show. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of it. Hey, I'm going to be really loud tonight, so just <laughs> letting you know. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of a mixed bag with people because like um, some of my neighbors uh, didn't know that I played music uh, um, yeah. or they'd only heard my my guitar from my basement where I practice. Sure. <laughs> so, I didn't know you were the um, real deal. But they they came out and watched that. And then um, we only played a few songs that night, but they actually came okay. out to uh, the, the release show that I had the next night. Um, so like the actual show. Uh, so they had that happen. And then uh, I think the funniest thing from that night, though, was uh, a guy came about halfway through and he was he was pretty drunk. Um, we're, we're, I'm around bars and stuff, so. Sure. You know. <laughs> um, but he came back later after we had done finished putting everything away and uh, we had a, a keg that we had purchased and he had like a, a tub of ice that I was sitting in. And this sure, guy, sure decided that the best thing that he could do was take a huge gulp of water directly from the keg of water in the bucket. So yeah, that was how... fun. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, I, yeah, I'm not going to call out any names or anything, obviously, but... <laughs> you know who you are. Don't do you know it who you are. You drink <laughs> so some funny. nasty keg water. <laughs> That's disgusting. Um, I... I also want to know what a set list is looking like for me. You know, we obviously we have a mutual love for a lot of the same artists. I want to know: Do you throw any covers in? Is it just you? How's it? You looking? know, I I throw more covers in when I play by myself than I do mm -hmm. with the band. This time sure. we did not have any covers. Okay. Uh, but 
I will say that with this EP, what I originally had set out to record was a full length. Sure. Uh, and just because of, you know, COVID time and money and all these different factors, I wasn't able to do the full length. But the set that I play live is not necessarily all the songs I was going to put on that record, mm -hmm. but uh, it's got more stuff on top of what's just on internal combustion. So it kind of fills out the, the sound a little bit more. I what think. do you mean by that? Like extended jams or just like? Um, more so just that instead of just having five songs, I have, we play, I think 10 or 11 songs. Oh, wow. Okay. Band. Yeah. So, I mean, it's internal combustion is like half of what I do basically. Okay, cool. <laughs> Bam, um, man, at least you can get out there and play it and kind of perfect right, those yeah. songs. Yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere. And I mean, yeah. it's like a lot of people, I, a lot of the things that I play, I've had written for, for years right. and you know, some of it I've been able to record, some of it I haven't been able yeah. to. So. But also the feeling of getting out there and knowing that, I mean, we're not quite in December, but the fact that you've, it's almost been two years of you recording this and then mm -hmm. getting on a stage, no matter how small, no matter how big and actually doing it, like it has to be this super rewarding feeling that you can't replicate anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, I spent months building the the hype <laughs> to get, yeah, to get yeah. do these shows so but yeah that's been the hardest tough. part for any independent artist is like just so many people that ha like saw so much momentum happening in the last two years mm -hmm. again doesn't matter how big you were how small you were and just like the air let out of the balloon and the yeah. mm -hmm. bands that could have potentially blown up to stardom over the last two years who have had to delay records and delay everything like yeah for so many people, it's starting fresh, and ah oh, man, it's just like I, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But like I said, I'm so happy that you're able to get out there and back on track. You're playing these shows. The EP is out, and everyone should listen to it. So, yeah, I um, I mean, I planned on releasing this record originally last year, yeah. uh, and I kind of just realized, hey, you have no idea what you're doing, <laughs> so. You should take some time and kind of figure out how to, yeah. how to promote yourself on a, a level bigger than just local, you know? Totally, totally. Um, kind of brings me to my next thing here. I want to know, are you the type of person that is always working on the next thing? Like, are you always trying to like noodle around with the new ideas or sing into your notes app if, if an idea comes to you? <laughs> uh, yes, I very much am. Okay. Uh, so... I think sometime before you and I had the first interview, I was doing this thing um, <clears throat> called the 20 song game. Um, it's unfamiliar. It's but this I like crazy it. idea. It comes from a book called the frustrated songwriters handbook, um, which <laughs> right. was not. Yeah. Lot, I mean, a lot it was of frustrated like a, songwriters out there. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but the idea is that you have a 12 hour time block in which you're trying to write 20 songs in 12 hours. Wow. Right. Now, it doesn't need to be a full, like, you know, three to five minute long song. Sure. You're basically coming up with like fragments of songs. Um, but I did two of those that I live streamed the whole 12 hours I was writing. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. And while, of course, you know, it wasn't like a huge audience or anything, people kind of filtered in and out throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, I ended up getting, I think, 30 song ideas out of doing those two things wow uh, and that's not you know all the songwriting i do sure. that's just those specific things um but yeah i mean i'm always trying to write new things and change what i do and see like you know how far i can stretch my my capabilities i guess so right well is there is i mean is you wrote 30 fragments of songs have you taken anything from those and expanded on them i I'm kind of just now starting to expand some of them. Okay. Um, a big deal with what um, I've done in those that the the writing sessions for those is I've started incorporating more um, like synths and um, okay. digital instruments into my stuff, which I've never really done before. Um, so I'm kind of like still in the experimental phase of doing some things like that. Okay. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I really like the music that I make now, but sure. I, I'm always looking to try and 
improve what I do or, or to add a different spin to it, you know? Yeah. Is there any idea for what you might want to follow up with? I mean, it sounds like you're going to experiment and whatever, you're always experimenting, mm -hmm. but as far as like the Colton Cox sound, I, I feel that it's already sort of, I'm not, I don't think all over the place is the yeah. right word. Rather, there's a lot of different influence from song to yeah. song, but it still has you at the base of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's one of my biggest idols is the Beatles. Sure. Um, and what I've always appreciated about them is that they can do all these different sounds and still sound like the Beatles, you know? Right. Um, and I think nowadays um, there's a tendency for artists to kind of lock into one sound and then do that for their whole record, which yeah. there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I just like to kind of keep you guessing a little bit more. Um, yeah. And it's also more of a challenge for me too, because I have to figure out how I can take all these wide varied influences and still make it all sound like me, like, like it's exactly. one cohesive idea. You know? Right, right. So, I think definitely in the space of making an EP, that seems like a slightly easier task rather yeah. than stretching it out to an album. But I mean, as always, I can't wait to see what you do next, whatever it may be, even if it's just a minor change in, yeah. in sound. Like you're right though. I, I, I think that's kind of like, it's what shows what separates the good from the bad bands is having mm -hmm. something that is so signature you but being able to switch up the background could yeah. come in the form of vocals it could come in the form of instrumentation but it's like that's the secret sauce that everyone's trying to figure out so i guess we'll see yeah yeah, yeah i mean it, right. it will definitely have some things different but i i have a, a guess that i'm probably at the core still going to have the same influences and stuff like that so yeah, that's good We'll see so that's where it's going to change. I mean, do you find that whatever you're listening to while you're making music has an influence on you, or does it come it from does. past influences? Um, what I typically do when I'm trying to, you know, if I have a certain sound that I'm going for, I will listen to um, a bunch of artists who I am inspired by in a certain genre or something like that. Sure. And I'll yeah. kind of glean what I can from them and see what they do uh, and try and make my own spin on it, you know? Yeah, I understand that. I, I know that there's a, there's a lot of artists out there that try not to listen to music while they're making their own music. Because right. <laughs> then you, you finish the record and you're like, oh crap, I just made a this <laughs> album record and that's kind of a problem. But I don't know, man. You're, you know, you've got a good head on your shoulders. You know what you're <laughs> doing. You know what not to sound like. Um, <laughs> kind of brings me to my next thing here. I always want to know what people are listening to. So since the last time we spoke, or even I guess th throughout the span of this year, have there been any albums or specific artists that you've discovered or something that you'd like to recommend to me specifically, not anyone else? <laughs> Man, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. um, so I actually do, um, I do this uh, a podcast of my own uh, called oh. Get Into the Groove. Um, and it's basically like a uh, record equivalent to uh, like a book club. Okay. <laughs> so we pick out a record and then we all listen to it and then we kind of just give our reactions to it um, as we record it. And in doing that, um, you know, I've a lot of them I'm familiar with, but there's a few that I have not been familiar with. And uh, two that I was kind of um, taken aback by, I guess. Um, mm. There is a uh, car seat headrest. Huge fan. <laughs> yeah. Have you not listened <laughs> to them before that? I had not, no. Oh, I, uh, I mean, you're not missing out anymore. What did you listen to? I'm really interested. Um, it was um, um, Twin, Twin Fantasy, I think. No, no. Yeah, probably. It was probably Twin Fantasy. That's like the most well-known yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think it was Twin Fantasy, um, but we listened to that one, and then the one that really surprised me was um, uh, Tyler, the creator's uh, uh, Igor. Yes. Um, yeah, that and, and, yeah, I could I could talk about that for a while. <laughs> I'm not even the biggest, I mean, I, listen, I enjoy hip-hop, I enjoy rap, yeah. but like, that album kind of transcends everything. The production really style, yeah, okay, those are two it's great so albums. Good. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I was taken. I was really surprised by the soul music influence on that record. Like, yeah, I did not expect that from Tyler, the creator. It was right. really cool. <laughs> I think he just put out a new album like a week mm -hmm. or two ago. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, I haven't either. Igor is still pretty fresh to, to me, yeah. but uh, definitely worth checking out. And then I also highly recommend going through Carsey Tedra's uh, discography. I know yeah. that he was like a band camp artist that had released like 10 or 12 albums and didn't yeah. get any. I mean, he got notoriety, but then finally, you know, blew up with that one. Uh, I think the coolest thing with him was just kind of seeing how indie music has changed since the mid 2000s. Totally. Because like, you know, when I think of indie music, I think of, you know, like Death Cab for Cutie and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, you know, totally. and he's kind of taken that stuff from the mid 2000s and made it into something completely like new and different and i i wasn't like totally blown away by it but i will say that i was really impressed with the ambition that he had on some of those songs yes They're crazy yeah. crazy songs <laughs> i think uh i think like the standout is beach life in death or something yeah. so, like the yeah. second track that's like 16 minutes long <laughs> yeah you're just like whoa um, I've seen him live a couple times, and it's a it's an interesting show. It's gotten better over the years, I will say. Yeah, but definitely some good stuff. Well, you continue to have amazing, uh, amazing taste, which I'm not surprised about at all. Um, and Colton, it's been an awesome time talking to you. I want to start wrapping things up with yeah. the same, same question that I closed with last time, which is basically. Uh, for the person who is going to discover you from this and for the person that is going to listen to your music for the first time, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them as they enter into your world that you've created? So um, Internal Combustion, the album is pretty much all um, experiences from my life from as young as like 16 years old to now. Yeah. Um, so if you listen to it, I just hope that you find something that you can connect with and that these songs that I've written can help bring the same kind of comfort or even like cathartic release that it brought to me when I was writing them. Uh, so yeah, I really hope it just connects with people and uh, that they get, get something out of it, you know? I have a strong feeling that it will. I seriously love it and I listened to it on release day before any of this was planned so I just thank you for making great music I think that any lover of rock and roll under any subgenre is going to find something redeeming in it it really does kind of transcend genre on its own every song is different but very much you um, and again for everyone internal combustion it is out it's a short EP, so listen to it multiple times. Uh, Colton, thank you so, so much again for your time and for making this happen. I really look forward to speaking soon, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too, Austin. It's always nice to hear from you, man. Yeah, man. Take care, and uh, we'll talk soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You too.